Now that the printer is complete, I'd like to share my thoughts on the build and some things I learned along the way. We start with some tools that were really useful for this build, such as these side cutters, which were great for cutting wires and belts, and the needle nose pliers, just about everything else, including stripping. This pair of squares kept everything straight, and having two was really useful in terms of aligning uh, rails and extrusions. And these calipers were great for uh, measuring screw lengths, hole dimensions, whatever the case may be. Used them all the time. Allen wrenches are great, but having a set of bits to fit all the screws on the build set was a huge time saver, including having a driver and an electric screwdriver or small drill that these fit into as well. An X-Acto knife or utility knife was really quite useful as well. 3D printed rail spacers were critical, otherwise there's no way I would have gotten the linear rails on. And then these um, round, small um, spacers that fit in the rail that hold the carriages or stop them from moving were incredibly useful as well. A blunt tip syringe was fantastic for loading it up with white lithium grease and then installing it into the carriages of the linear rails. Um, there's no way this would have worked without it. No way to build a Voron without a soldering iron and some really good high quality solder. Digital infrared uh, thermometer was super useful, making sure the bed heater was working correctly and evenly. And since we are talking about wiring, electronics, and voltages here, you've got to have a voltmeter um, with continuity. You'll need some heat shrink tubing and either a hot air gun. Um, this is, you know, almost a toy hot air gun, but it worked just fine. And really, you need the smallest, the one, the one and a half, and maybe two millimeter heat shrink tubing. The Blue Rolls kit came with what looked like um, really good crimp on um, spade female terminals. Um, but for whatever reason, they just did not work that great with my crimper. Um, but I just happened to have a crimper and a kit with uh, some other connectors, additional connectors. I ended up using these just because they crimped really well. You know, try the ones that come with it. If they work well, great. If not, be prepared for something else. I'm sure, you, sure you've seen these Engineer brand um, crimpers uh, for the JST connectors, and they were also um, really useful for the Molex minis as well. If you haven't used one before, make sure you order uh, some extra pins um, because there was just enough for what you needed with the kit. I needed some extras because I destroyed some of these. And um, with the JSTs, you might want to go ahead, it's really cheap, and order a package of additional connectors as well because again, I ran out. While the wiring that came with the kit um, seemed to be really good, high quality, um, I decided to go with a couple of short lengths of higher gauge wire for the 110 voltage going into the machine. The included thermistor was a little fragile. I broke it by mistake, or rather it worked for, I don't know, two or three times and then it became a little bit flaky. So you might as well order a couple of extras um, in advance and while you're at it, um, go ahead and order a new hot end heater as well. Again, just in case you destroy it when you're assembling the um, hot end. The kit came with a nice length of PTFE tubing, um, but for whatever reason, um, it, the inner diameter was a little bit smaller than it should be, and the outer diameter was a little larger than it should be, which made it really hard to insert in the print head, but also um, it came clear when feeding the length of filament um, there was a lot of friction, and uh, there were times where the, uh, uh, the stepper motor on the extruder was uh, skipping. And so it turns out um, I had some other brand new PTFE tubing laying around. Um, the inner diameter was just a tiny bit bigger, the outer diameter was just a tiny bit smaller, and it worked perfect. And all my problems ended, and it's really easy to feed and a lot less um, friction involved. So if you can, I would go ahead and recommend you get a higher quality PTFE tube. And make sure you get a cutter with that to cut the PTFE tubing cleanly. 
So the kit came with the required M3 and M4 screws as well as just about any other. But for whatever reason, a couple of times I found myself short and in other areas there were quite a few extra screws that came with the kit. So you can get it really cheap online. I bought this kit of M3 and M4 hex nut screws and it turned out to be really useful sort of save the day in a few tight spots. Similarly, I was five short on the heat set inserts, so I recommend you get some extras. Um, you will probably use these in future projects that you want to build. I also got this um, uh, pressure connector for the PTFE tubing, which was useful again for the air filter. And I had a hard time with any of the um, 3D printed wire guides and fitting them in the extrusion. This turned out to be ideal. Um, I have some quarter inch diameter um, vinyl um, hosing just cut off little pieces and um, insert them and they work great. Just to show you real quick how they work, here I've got some wire, let's imagine we want to hide it in this extru extrusion and uh, so here I take the tubing, excuse the blurriness, and I just cut off a small piece. And you can also feed wire through it before inserting it into the, to the extrusion, which is nice as well. So on the wiring harness here at the front, at the print end, the hot end, um, I had a really hard time with the standard Voron cable cover. I just could not get the cables to fit. So it turns out someone did solve this and there is another design for another cable co uh, cover. Um, I'll put the link um, at the video and you can see where I used it and it covered up everything really quite nicely. And uh, it definitely solved my problem. You may be interested in using this too. Okay, so the biggest looming question, the bed and the quality of the bed and is it flat? So here you can see my mesh of the bed. It doesn't look that flat. You may choose a different one and that's okay. But to be honest, I think I still need a little more time with this. Um, I find the tilt forward a little bit suspicious. Um, I'm going to do a few more tests, possibly shim it just a little bit. And to be honest, compared to my old printer, this is flat. <laughs> This is actually looking quite good, but I have seen some images of some out there that are supposedly a lot flatter. Um, you know, this could be any number of reasons. It could be um, I need to tighten the screws just a little bit more that are holding the bed down. Maybe that accounts for some of this. Um, they're right now very, very loose. It could also be an issue with um, uh, the sensor, um, the probe on the printer although it seems to be pretty consistent. And it could also be the gantry itself is maybe a little bit curved, although again, the tilt is a little bit suspicious. That said, um, it does uh, self-tune and adjust itself, and every print that has come off this printer has been great. Um, I honestly have no complaints. I'm gonna stick with this for a little while, see if you make it look a little better, and eventually, you know, maybe next year sometime, I might go ahead and get another bed. But from now, I'm actually really quite happy with it. If you found this video useful, please click subscribe. And um, thank you very much for uh, watching this series. And um, I hope to publish some additional videos uh, in the future. Um, I'm looking at some mods already for this printer, some minor, like lighting, uh, some might be a little more interesting, a little more major than that. Um, but anyway, again, thank you very much. 